Tschüss zusammen. <lacht>
been with me for a while now. I've been taking them for, wow, almost a little under a full year now. Time flies when you're in a panini. I love that they're not only super transparent about their ingredient sourcing, but that the packs come in a compostable film and they even provide all the info on how to compost them at takecareof.com slash p slash eco. Each pack is customized for your unique needs, so all you have to do is head to their site and take their holistic online quiz, and then they're shipped to you every single month. They also make it really easy to adjust your plan as your needs change or even pause or cancel if you need. Studies show it can take about 30 days for you to feel the effects of taking a new supplement, so consistency is key and having them mailed to your door every month makes it super, super easy. That way you're never worried about running out and you don't need to go on spontaneous trips to the store when that's just not what you want to be doing at 9 p.m. running errands right before the store closes. Oh my gosh, those are the worst. You can take the quiz via the link below to see what supplements Care of recommends for you. And of course, you can use my promo code Sudona50 for 50% off your first order. And I, for one, am now ready to go adventure outside, use the wellness that the universe has gifted me to go frolic in a field with some buffalo. Does it get any better than that? No, it doesn't. We got here a little bit later than we wanted to but we just found a quick little hike that's it's like 0.6 miles, it's super short. So I figured we'd go for a little sunset hike and see the views. And it's funny because we went on a hike on Sunday on Easter and it's not very often that I take out my hiking shoes <laughs> twice in one week. Not even twice in one week, twice in the span of like four days. <laughs> Good. I wasn't expecting a hike today. I think we're going to get a good vantage point of uh, both mountain ranges from up here. Yeah. It's kind of nice being somewhere in the middle of the week. Don't normally have this privilege. Uh, there's like nobody here. I also royally apologize for how out of breath I am right now. <laughs> I'm walking up a mountain, okay? I have every right. <laughs> Be out of breath. <laughs> We're just starting to worry me because she's like barking at them. <laughs> and I just don't think that that's a good thing to be doing. <laughs> I'm also kicking myself for not bringing a hair tie. <laughs> Am I good? Chihuahua, hi, dog. Hi. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Bison were my middle school mascot, and I've always kind of been curious about them because of that. I was absolutely blown away by their beauty, and seeing them in real life for the first time had me absolutely dumbfounded. I've always thought that for an animal that's so inherent to the historical nature of the land we live on, I had little to no idea as to why there were comparatively so few of them today. This specific island was occupied by prehistoric peoples more than 6,000 years ago, and was often frequented by the indigenous people of the Ute tribe until the late 1840s. A few years later, a Mormon settler established a ranch on the island herding cattle and sheep for the church, but was later bought and privatized by John Dooley Sr., who introduced the bison to the island in 1893 with a herd of just 12. And while some websites I've read simply state that he established the Island Improvement Company to manage the island and its ranches, what I found was that he was really trying to supplement his income with private bison hunts, knowing that he had few of the remaining bison in the nation. At the time, American bison were nearly extinct in North America, having suffered years of hunting and extermination. If we take the timeline back a bit, it's estimated that somewhere between 30 and 60 million bison once roamed the Western United States prior to the arrival of the Anglo-American colonizers. 
Bison once inhabited the grasslands of North America in massive herds stretching from what is now Florida, up through New York in the east, south to the Texas-Mexico border, all the way up to the Yukon Territory in Canada, and way out to the Pacific coast, pretty much everywhere. Bison were an incredibly important resource to indigenous tribes. They provided everything from meat for food and hides for shelter. And the United States government knew this at the time, so the U.S. Army launched a campaign to rid the plains of bison, thereby depriving the indigenous peoples of their most prized natural resource and making them dependent on the government, also that the colonizers could conquer and inhabit the West. Without the bison, native peoples were forced to seek peace, while conservationists at the time saw that destroying the bison population was detrimental to the future of the nation, and so in 1874, Congress voted to stop the campaign. By the 1980s, only approximately 800 bison remained, a population that was once estimated between 30 and 60 million. And while I know that everything I've said here only scrapes the surface of this history, I felt it was really important to touch on. In 1981, the state purchased this land and turned it into a state park. Today, the island has become a valuable genetic pool for bison breeding and conservation. And they do so well here because of the island's dry native grassland. I'm not gonna lie, like whenever I'm in national parks like this, I never know what the protocol is because I'm still on the trail, but I don't. Space. Just be here and be like, hi friends, you're all hanging out? Cool. I'll just be here. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, you brought binoculars. Oh. You know what I think is really funny? When we were getting our vaccines earlier, she was like, oh, just take it easy tonight, maybe tomorrow morning. Some people feel side effects and we're like here. Oh, oh, really? That's the worst headache that I feel like. I had to sit down with so just Oh, like, really? Oh, it's okay. I was going to say, and here we are being super irresponsible. right now just covering the windows and we're just going to sleep in the car tonight instead of setting up camp this is still kind of cold out so if we can we might as well we handmade these reflectics a couple months ago welcome to our midnight reflectics operation how's it going you know do i wish we did this in daylight a little bit, but here we are. T minus probably five hours from when we need to be awake. And they definitely could use a trim. They don't fit very well. They fit, they're just, they fall out sometimes. Exhibit A, the one that I just put in already fell out. 
think the one thing too that I always forget when we decide to sleep in the car instead of in a tent is you think you can pack lavishly because you're car camping instead of backpacking. But then I don't know where we're putting all of our things overnight because our bodies need to go there. And so I overpack every single time. Again. We also have to be super vigilant with her because depending on the hikes that we go on, there's either really big birds or coyotes. <laughs> Something that could call her lunch, that's for sure. Extra reflectix down here. I have my this is my dad's old sleeping pad from the 90s that I've been using for probably like three years now. It's only like a half pad. It's not the best, but it works. I got these pillows on Facebook Marketplace last year. They're the move. They're great. That's pretty much it. Are you cozy? For the rest of the night, we sat by the fire, grilled pita bread, and ate some dinner, and slowly, and unknowingly to us, had some side effects from the vaccine roll in. Good morning. Definitely one of the weirder camping sleeps I've ever had. Can you confirm? Were you the same? It's like the equivalent of waking up when you're in your 80s or something. That's how I feel! It's like creaky and you're like, everything's broken. If anyone is curious, I thought I'd give a little update just in case anyone's curious about how we're feeling post Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, I felt very warm last night and I realized halfway throughout the night that I was very the sun is really bright. <laughs> I was very dehydrated. And then it kind of sent me into this like existential crisis of like, I need to take care of my body better. I need to drink more water. And no one needs that at 2 a.m. in the morning. Thank you. Grab it from here, it's, it's really hot at the base. We're building some new campsites, so you can probably hear the uh, construction equipment, which <laughs> not something that you would expect to hear while in nature. Not that I'm mad. Or at, or, or at 8 a.m. Or at 8 a.m. Not that I'm mad, I'm glad they're building more sites for sure. Also, there are bison right next to us right now. But yeah, I just kind of feel achy and creaky. Like this arm, I, I feel it less now, but overnight, like this arm was definitely like a little bit sore. I feel like if I didn't know I had a vaccine, I probably wouldn't really notice it or I'd just feel like I was hungover or something. So I'm gonna make sure that I take those supplements that I was talking about earlier in the video because I know that is not gonna make me instantly feel better right now. Long term, just taking care of myself. And make sure I drink a lot of water this morning. Do you need breakfast? And with that, it was time to pack up and head home. Hi fam, I cliche me here while I'm editing, just wanted to say I didn't film a sign off for this video. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this style of vlog, I haven't vlogged in a really long time. Also, don't know if I've ever made a video where I'm makeup free, and also not only makeup free, but I just I haven't been feeling 100% lately, and that does reflect in like, I'm not looking 100%. My hair's a little greasy right now. And we roll with it. There's a not even that old version of me that would never 
post a video where I look like this. If there's anything I've learned this year, it's like, I care, but also who cares sometimes. It's all about balance, and I'm just trying to be real, I'm just trying to be me. Just here to say, I hope you enjoy this style of video. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe and let me know. And I will film more vlogs, more honest and real things. Like the old me probably wouldn't have included that clip of us using an aerosol glue can, but at, the, at that time, it was the only product that we could use to make what we needed to make. And moving forward, it's just like, yeah, I do zero waste things, but I'm not always perfect. That is life. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to bed now because it's 3 a.m. and I'm going to upload this. So, good night, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be for you. I hope you're having a scrumptious day. Remember to stay happy, humble, and forever compassionate, and I love you so much. Bye.